Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. I had some people who were asking me about the subject of tax optimization for dividend investors. And since that's popular amongst certain groups of people, I figured we would do a video on this. So we're gonna cover for you how dividend investing fits into an international tax planning strategy. Can you take advantage of it? What are the pitfalls? Obviously it varies country to country. So if you guys have questions about the country that you're in specifically, please reach out to me, uh, but we're gonna go over it. So before we do that, if you haven't already, please smash the subscribe button, nail the notification bell, make sure you don't miss out on any of our future videos. If you are interested in this subject of how to optimize your international tax, either by moving abroad or by building a corporate structure, I would like help with what to do or how to build it and the actual implementation of it, please reach out to me. You can book a call, calendly.com forward slash michael-rosmer, and you can check out our websites, offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com. Okay, let's go. So there's two parts to this whole thing, right? The big deal is can you reduce the rate of tax that you're paying and can you defer the tax that you're paying? Either one could be advantageous depending on the situation you're in. So let's just kind of walk through the typical scenario here. Uh, at an extreme, maybe you're buying an index of the S&P 500, various of those different companies will pay out dividends and part of those are gonna to go to you as a holder. And you know, maybe you decide to build a specific portfolio of companies. You're buying into utility companies, banks, companies that pay high dividends relative to their overall share price, right? And actually, if you'd done this in the oil and gas sector back uh, when prices were way, way down, you could be doing pretty well. So how, has that, how, how would you deal with that? There's a few interesting ways that you can potentially approach this, okay? Uh, the concern being both that, hey, when you receive dividends, they're taxable, right? Uh, in most places anyway. And number two, you may find that they're subject to withholding tax. So for instance, if you have a US uh, company that's paying out a dividend, and let's say that you're in Hong Kong, well, dividends, foreign dividends might not be taxable to you, but there may be 30% withholding tax on the US side. So that's not so good, right? Really kind of undermines the, bow, the benefit. It's basically like the IRS was taxing you even though you're not there, which is literally what's happening. So how do we want to deal with that in this particular situation? Well, we have the strategy of, of course, you know, we can try and relocate somewhere, right, and benefit. But interestingly, this is one case where it doesn't necessarily help you that much because you might be in a situation where uh, it's taxed at source rather than where you are, okay? So relocating, not necessarily better. Literally, uh, Americans, if they can qualify, get qualified dividends, may pay less tax on dividends from American companies than foreign investors in zero tax countries, which is kind of a bizarre situation. That's not normally what happens, right? Okay. So. How do we handle this? Uh, there's a few different things. The first one is depending on where you're investing from, you may find that that company is listed on multiple exchanges and uh, basically you can take advantage of the listing in one country versus another in order to end up without having those withholding taxes. So this is an interesting thing that a bunch of people aren't really aware of, but for instance, uh, Royal Let's Shell will be listed in Netherlands, it'll be listed in the UK, I believe it's also listed in the US. So uh, for certain big companies, this is, this is common, you know, and you can potentially, in some cases, not in all cases, but in some cases, you can choose where to buy that asset. And first of all, there can be a different uh, currency denomination, which may have some effect for you, it may help to streamline your investing, either by reducing your currency conversion or you know, there's a different delta that can take place there, whatever. Uh, or you can end up in a situation where you can avoid the withholding taxes on dividends. So boom, that's pretty cool, right? That's, uh, that's one thing immediately that people aren't maybe thinking about that is worth considering, okay? The second thing that you can do is you can potentially take advantage of tax treaties. Now I've got another video on what are withholding taxes and how does that all work? And I've talked a little bit about this subject, but just briefly. What you're gonna find is that there is a default withholding rate, okay? So for instance, in the US, the default withholding rate on dividends is 30%. And this is common in a few different countries. 
then what happens is that withholding rate will be reduced based on an applicable tax treaty. Now, certain countries have really extensive treaty networks. So for example, Canada has like 92 tax treaties. The US has, I think it's about 56. Some have over 100, some have very few, okay? But there are certainly countries that have tax treaties that can help to reduce those rates. So potentially, a 30% rate, usually what happens is by default, it goes from 30%, let's say it's 30%, uh, cut in half, okay? So the formerly 30% rate goes down to 15%. Great, you saved yourself, you know, half as much tax. So that's good for your compounding, that's helpful, right? Now, sometimes in your home country, you're gonna get a tax treaty for that, or tax, uh, tax credit for it anyway, so it may or may not be useful to you, okay? But basically what you would do is this, you would basically go through and you would say, okay, great, are there countries that I can benefit from uh, better tax treaties? Now, what is that, how, how do you take advantage of that? There's two ways you could possibly take advantage of it. One is to move to one of those countries, which may or may not be a good idea, but uh, for instance, you might be able to do it by going to a country like Cyprus. Okay, so Cyprus, I've done a video on it, great non-DOM program. You might be able to benefit it from it by going to UK. Again, good non-DOM program, we have a video on that. Depends on what your situation is, but a bunch of countries that have low taxes on dividends uh, also have a great, uh, or some sort of a special uh, tax regime that allows you to reduce the tax on dividends, maybe to zero, also are in a situation where they have a great treaty network. Okay, so that's one approach. And although if you're you know, a regular working person, maybe you wouldn't factor that in. If you're somebody who has you know, built a large dividend portfolio that you're living and retiring off of, that can make a big difference. Okay, so one route. The second route is you could possibly form a company in that country. Now, a bunch of caution here. There is something, and I've done again a video on this as well, uh, something called limitation on benefits clauses. Okay, what is it, how does this work? Or anti-treating shopping provisions, these two, two things that could happen. So the way this works is if you just form a company, so let's use a really simple example. Say you're living in uh, UAE, right? Great, and it's zero tax, wonderful. But you're investing in shares of Apple. Okay, Apple pays a dividend, it's a US company, that's not so good for you. You're paying 30% withholding tax, terrible. All right, what do you do about this? Well, you might say, hey, listen, you know, UK has a nice tax treaty with the US, so I can put a UK company in the middle there and I can reduce that withholding tax rate. UK company is cheap and easy to set up. Uh, I can make it so that I can pay out dividends tax-free. This seems good, right? No, not so much. Uh, if you're in that situation, very likely there's provisions that prevent you from just forming a company and kind of mapping around saying, oh great, I can form a company here to get no dividends there and then I can form another company here so there's no dividend tax here and then I can pay out to me over here. That's, as much as it's a nice idea, uh, they've been around this for long enough that they know how that works and they're not gonna let you do that in a bunch of cases. So usually you need some sort of substance in that company, okay? Now, that being said, you can possibly kill a few birds with one stone here, right? In other words, this may factor into your overall international tax planning strategy because maybe you were thinking, hey, I'm gonna set up a company in, I don't know, let's just say you were, you probably wouldn't do this today, but say you were gonna do it in Nevis, right? Nevis has no tax treaties, so that's terrible. Uh, and you say instead, well, hang on a minute, what if I could instead do it in Cyprus, right? And by being in Cyprus, maybe I'm gonna pay a little bit tax, more tax on my earned income, but I can also run all my uh, investment income through there, and as a result, not pay tax on those dividends, or at least have a reduced tax rate because Cyprus has a reasonable array of tax treaties. Perfect, this is you know, a better situation. Maybe you could do that, right? That's really case by case, but the point is that it shows you how thinking about other factors aside from just your business can play into the best place to structure your company, okay? Now, there is a little bit of a note of caution here, uh, which is it could be that, let's say that you're in Canada, for instance, right? And you decide, hey, listen, I'm gonna form a company in Cyprus, I'm gonna take advantage of this Cyprus company to do some investing and avoid some withholding taxes, 
and all is well and good. The problem is you, know, you could end up triggering, say in this case, Canada's what they call uh, FAPI rules, uh, which is foreign accrual property income rules, uh, which apply to passive income, which would include dividends, and therefore, you know, make render inert all of those benefits. Okay, so you have to consider where you are, where the entity is, what the consequences are of where the investment is to the entity to you. Okay, that whole thing has to be considered. That being said, uh, sometimes this can be a very useful uh, process to go through. Sometimes you can save a bunch of tax and you can choose where to base yourself accordingly. The next thing that uh, you can consider is sometimes, okay, uh, so for example, in the case of Canada, you can't pay out uh, dividends from that, uh, that company tax-free to a Canadian holding company. Okay, that's not allowed uh, if it's passive income, right? So it's not what they call exempt surplus, okay? That being said, you may be able to defer, and I've done some videos on the value of deferral. So the bottom line of all of this is, okay, if you're in a situation where you are earning a large dividend income or going to be earning a large dividend income, it is definitely very worthwhile to understand what are the withholding tax rules where you are? Is there a way to structure it so that you can reduce those withholding taxes and potentially you can reduce it a lot, right? And like I said, some cases from 30% down to 5%, right? So pretty big savings. Then it may be possible, even if it's gonna ultimately get taxable to you, to at least defer it so you can reinvest that money over and over again and compound it over whatever period of time, which could be pretty substantial, and it can make a pretty big difference for you. So anyway, that's kind of the overall concept of what it is that you need to do. You need to either relocate or you need to form a company in some place. You may need substance, may or may not, depends on the anti-treaty shopping rules. You may want have to consider your local country's rules. Maybe you have some CFC rules or something that can play in there but it could potentially be a good solution. And the much simpler solution is sometimes you can just buy off a different exchange and that can give you uh, a different advantage. So anyway, hope that helps. If you have questions about it, reach out to me. I understand it can be complicated. It's very case by case. Every country's got different rules, so you know it's hard to navigate and generalize, but it gives you a basic concept. And if you have questions, you can put them in the comments below. Like I said, or you can book a call with me. I'm gonna look forward to seeing you guys on the next video.